So the first uh, video here on making the fire extinguisher is pretty straightforward and it just deals with the tank on the fire extinguisher. Um, what I have here from my sketch, um, which I'll make available on my website as well, I have a circle that represents the outer and the inner, so like the outside diameter of the fire extinguisher, and obviously there's wall thickness, which in this case is uh, 0 0.070 uh, inches. Um, this right here is the same as this inner circle because we need a plate in the bottom of it that would typically be welded in. And then this part is a curve because the top of the fire extinguisher is a dome shape. Um, so um, at any rate, this is going to be used in conjunction with the revolve tool. And then this right here is the neck that's on the top of the bottle, which would typically be threaded. Uh, so those are all the parts we really need. Um, what I'm going to do quickly, so these are construction lines. Those don't have anything to do with the, uh, the fire extinguisher at all. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I can erase these lines now. Um, and, uh, but actually, you know what I would do is I would probably just turn them off for a moment. Uh, I don't need this line at all. So I really could actually just trim this because what I need to do is trim the overhang there. Trim. Shoot, sorry. And trim the overhang there. Okay. Um, and then this will have to become a part of that as well. Okay. Um, I'm doing this one way incorrectly and the other way correctly so that uh, you can see um, kind of what there's, there's one point I you know, want people to see here. But this... Uh, right here, I'm going to go ahead and draw a line right on top of this. Oops. I'm fat fingering everything today. Um, from endpoint to endpoint. And this is going to close up everything on my drawing. Okay. Uh, I should probably extend that first. And draw a line. So I have to join everything. Remember with any kind of 3D uh, solid construction. Everything has to be joined or you can't make it into a solid. So double check that, you know, hover over it, make sure everything lights up. And I'm going to do the same thing on this. And, and there's nothing to join out here because this is all circular objects. The construction line that's right here is going to be handy here in a moment when I put my, I'm going to move me here so I can see my uh, pop-up window uh, for 3D modeling. When I move, um, try to put this dome shaped top on top of my tank. So um, let's go to a southwest isometric view. A couple of things I can do very quickly. One, I can extrude the bottom plate, and I'm going to make that 0 0.070, same thickness as the top. Okay, so you can check over here, go to uh, your realistic view, and you can see that now you have a solid object. Okay. Um, I'll wait to, uh, I'll go ahead and place that in in a, in a few minutes. Um, now I have to go to here and I'm going to extrude both pieces at the same time. My tank uh, appears to be, from my drawing, 15.5 inches. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead now and move this in. There should be two center points, an upper and a lower. So I'm going to move my lower to my lower and then I'm going to just do a regular move and whoop I should have I jumped the gun there I don't want to move this in until I do a subtraction so right here we go back we haven't made this into a cylinder yet so I want to come up here to use the subtract tool I want to grab the whole thing and this is why I like to do it actually uh, on wireframe oh I almost had it right there so now I've subtracted it and it is truly a cylinder, okay? Uh, I'm going to go back to my wireframe and I'm going to move. Again, I said I would like to use the bottom uh, endpoint. I'm going to come over here. And now I should be able to just move it upward. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to move it. <clears throat> From that bottom endpoint, I'm going to go up, making sure the polar line is on, and I'm going to type in 0.5 inches. Maybe that was a little high. 
<coughs> doesn't really matter. I could go down a little bit more if I wanted to. Okay, so these, I can also extrude these if I want to. Right now, these were like a height of 0.5. So I'm going to go ahead and extrude these. Uh, 0.5. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go use my subtract tool. I'm going to select the outer, right click, select the inner, right click. There's no way that I can tell if anything's happened unless I were to go to realistic. And now you can see that there is a, uh, uh, a subtraction that just happened right there. Okay, so that's going to go up at the top of the bottle here soon. Um, the next thing I need to do is I need to rotate both of these to 3D rotate them. So I'm going to come down here. I want them to go around the red hoop. And I'm going to type in 90. And now you can see I've stood them up into the air. Okay. So again, I said one of these I did correctly. One I did incorrectly. And I'll show you why that is. I'm going to give myself a little more space between these. All right. So this is a profile. This would be like, you know, if I cut uh, a tire in, in half, uh, if I cut a section out of it, I would see a U um, with the sidewall and the tread. But here, what I'm going to do is use the revolve tool. So the revolve works. It just asks me to select a profile like the U in a tire and I right click and I hit enter. And then it wants me to have a um, an axis. OK. And I don't know why it did not just do that. Let's try it one more time. It wants me to revolve this. Specify axis start point will be here. Axis end point will be here. And it is not doing it. So I'm going to uh, come back to the revolve tool um, in just a minute. I don't know what's going on. I'll try this one here. There it goes. OK. So it might have been I was touching itself. Uh, so revolve. I'll try this. We go from the end of here to the middle of here. There it goes. So you just can't touch the point, any point on the object. So I turn this around. I type in 360 and I hit enter. I'm going to do the same thing on this. There we go. So before I was touching up here, you had to touch down here. Type in 360. There's a subtle difference in these. The one that I drew the arc too aggressively on has a dimple down in the top of it. This one does not it's smooth all the way across. Okay, so the advantage now of having the um, this uh, construction line there with it was that now when I go to move it, this is a defined point, the end of that construction line, and I can go ahead and put that defined point right on the center point right there, and it should have come out absolutely great, but apparently I used the wrong size, so I'll fix that and come back to it. Uh, and then the last thing is this is going to come and uh, come up on the top. So I just have one fix to make on my uh, on my geometry or whatever sizing I, I got wrong. Uh, when that's all said and done, though, all I have to do, I'll, I'll fix it on my own um, because the concept is across. And then I just move the neck of this bottle and I come right up to here. And it should have pasted it. Um, one way that I can e more easily do this because it might have pasted it inside of there. X-ray is kind of handy. Now I can kind of look inside and see that or just come back to wireframe. And I can see right there. So that's what it did is just grabbed it and it stuck it on the end of the end point. If I go all the way up, I'm going to have a little gap. So this is where I might cheat a little bit and just say nearest. And some pick somewhere right along that line. Come back, go to realistic. And that's what I want to see, with the exception of this umbrella. So, like I said, I'll make that fix. But that is the tank. If I flip it over, I can see the end is plugged. And I just don't know what in the world I did. So, obviously, one incorrect measurement, but easy fix. That is the fire extinguisher tank.